Hey, welcome. We're glad to have you. Oh, don't set me up for something like that, Wayne. All right, now, we're glad you're here. Uh, this is, we're finally back in the place where we, I think, originated a long time ago. And uh, we hope we might bring out some more people. But for those of you who are interested, there's a big box up here, a big table full of boxes. And I have two pieces of a puzzle. <laughs> and whoever can find it, I'll give you, I'll give you $150. You don't believe me, do you? I'll see if I can find the boxes while the speaker's on because, okay. Hey, welcome. We're glad you're here. Tom Mackner is going to come make uh, a little announcement and be sure and take your mask off so we can understand your words. And number two, be sure and hold this microphone close so that you will be picked up. Well, good morning. It's really nice to see you all. Uh, oh, you want me to hold? Oh, uh, how about this? Unfortunately, we're recording this. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay, but I edit it. So <laughs> um, we have a protocol to follow when it comes to asking questions at any time, and that is that you step to a microphone and say your question at that time. You know, when we did things in the auditorium and we had 150 people in there, we had mic runners that, on each side. And if somebody had a question, you'd run over and give them the mic and they'd talk. Well, with the advent of COVID, uh, that, of course, has gone away. But the reason I'm really emphasizing it is uh, this meeting is being seen at people's homes. They've logged in through Zoom, and they can only hear what it comes through a microphone. So if you have a question, it is very important that you step to the mic and do it. Um, the other issue is it is being recorded so that it can be replayed on My W Life. And there are some people that could not make it today and will come back and want to pull it up and see. And if you ask a question from your chair, you don't get up and the speaker then might hear you very well, but no one else. And sometimes that speaker will forget to repeat the question that was asked. So we're all in the dark then from that point forward. So that's my talk for this morning. While you still have the microphone, introduce your team. We've got three people that set this up mechanically or whatever you call this, and they don't get along right. Tell us who they are. <laughs> okay. Um, Steve Ray is running the Zoom laptop there. He is a uh, professional in the computer industry coming out of that, and so he is uh, filling that slot. So those people at home, you want to thank Steve and for uh, actually for some of the recording part. Ray, we got Steve Ray, and then Ray Carnes back there is uh, helping with actually the video and all the setup of the room, the microphones, the camera, and all that. So he's a big help. Who's the third one? Oh, and then we have number three. Yes. All right. Thank you. Well, you left me open to say some stuff about you, but I won't. <laughs> uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your assistance. That's been going on a long time, and sometimes we forget the most important people. Uh, we have, interestingly enough, we do have one new resident today. Yay. Al, come on up here. Let me go to my secretary. Yes. How about Jack? Do you answer to Jack? He answers to Jack. Well, listen, you know, Al is not a bad name. Uh, so uh, we'll kind of, well, we got people over here and here. Welcome. Tell us who you are and give us the correct name, please, and where you live. <laughs> 
I'm in I'm Jack Miller. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And uh, my wife and I live in Creekside, and we've been here about a month. Which part of Creekside? Which end? We're at the uh, south end of, of Creekside in 200. South end? Oh, okay. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. And you came from where? Well, my wife and I both were born and raised here in Jacksonville. And um, we've lived here, back here, about 20 years, and we've lived a number of other places. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're, we're home. High school? Went to Landon High School down in San Marco. You notice how quick I pulled that yeah, back? I that. You must have gone to Lee. Is there any other place? <laughs> uh, family? Tell us about family. Got two, two sons. One uh, lives in uh, St. Augustine, and one lives in Seattle. Uh, needless to say, we see uh, the St. Augustine quite a, quite frequently, but the one in Seattle we don't see very often. Well, maybe you could get them to do a house swap every yeah, now and then. <laughs> and what did you do uh, for a living? I, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, I worked in the uh, consulting engineering business, uh, designing power plants, like uh, Northside Generating Station and, and those kinds of ones. Well, I guess Northside's still there, you know. Well, we're glad you're here, and uh, we'll get to know you better, Al. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jack, thank you. You bet. Thank you. Good to have you with us. Okay. Uh, today, we have as our speaker a person that if you don't know, you sure want to get to know. Her name is Susan Moran. And she's the, I call her money bags because she handles all the money. <laughs> Come on up here, Susan. Susan uh, works here at, um, what's the name of this place? Westminster Woods? Mostly. Mostly, and has been here several years. Uh, she's got a family she'll tell you about, and uh, she might wander away from talking about finances and bills and all that stuff and tell us about her love for animals. So welcome, Susan, and keep this close to your mouth or that crew will come after you. Hi, everybody. How are you doing this morning? I got to get my notes here because I'm a note girl. So Dr. Bailey said, um, he told me before that he was going to start the show off today with a joke. And then he comes along and introduces me. <laughs> and after that introduction, as brief as it was, I'm either the wrong speaker or I'm in front of the wrong audience. But seriously, um, my name is Susanna Moran. I go by Sue, Susie, Susan, Susanna, never Suzanne, and anything but late for dinner. Um, and I'm here today because Dr. Bailey thought you guys might want to know what the business office does. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> no, there's, there's two of us in the business office, and that's Samantha Birdsall and myself. Um, we are generally here Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. And our jobs entail a lot of different little things. Um, we serve not only the employees by making sure they all get their paychecks every two weeks. We do provide stimulus checks to our employees. Um, but also for the overall community, we make sure that the bills get paid so we can keep the lights on and have food on the tables and all that good stuff. Um, our biggest job, though, is taking care of you. And you think that, you know, well, how do you take care of us? Well, we do your billing. And we know how important it is to get that right because we're not dealing with our money. We're dealing with your money. Um, so we do the billing for the residents and we collect the payments for about 350 independent living folks, 60 assisted living, and also for the health center and rapid recovery. It's not just private money that we're working with. We're also billing all of the insurances. And there's a lot of different insurances out there. You all know that. We bill the secondary insurances if you're having outpatient therapy. Um, and we also bill long-term care insurance for a lot of folks who are either in assisted living or the health center. 
So there's lots and lots of paper crossing our desks every single day. Um, we love helping our residents. So knowing how to reach us is probably really important for all of you. The best way to do that is to either call us or to send us an email. If you call us, we want you to give us at least 24 hours to get back to you. That seems reasonable, right? If you email us, you're more likely to get an answer back within an hour. I've got some welcome letters that I hand out to folks on occasion that kind of tell you everything that I'm gonna go over and I'll give those to you as soon as we're done up here, okay? Does that work for everybody? Um, and that has our phone numbers and email addresses as well. So we send out their monthly statements um, between the 5th and the 10th of each month. Your payments are due on the 20th and are payable by check or auto pay. Auto pay is super convenient, okay? I have some forms with those for that if you're interested. And with auto pay, you still get your paper statement every month. You can still say, oh my gosh, that $6.40 is not my dining charge. And we'll give you the credit. Um, so you're able to review those statements for accuracy. Just know that when you're on auto pay, we have to submit those to the bank by the 15th of the month. So you've got about five days to review that and give us you know, any corrections. What's on your bill is going to be the last month's dining, beauty, activities, housekeeping, and then this month's monthly service fee or rent. You pay your rent for May in May, but you pay all your other stuff for April in May because we don't know what that's gonna be in advance. Meal plans and housekeeping are a package deal for the garden apartments and Magnolia. If at any time you opt, you opt out, you will be charged the a la carte pricing. If you need to make a change to your meal plan, you need to give that information to the business office before the last day of the month. We have to have that into the computer before the, by midnight on the first, or it doesn't take effect. So the last day of the month is the cutoff for meal packages. Um, and you can call those in to us. We used to say you gotta give us a piece of paper. Um, but if you call it in to us, make sure that we're writing it down as we're on the phone. Let's see. Extra meal plans are not intended to be shared. So if you're a husband and wife, you basically, if, and you want 15 meals each, we know you're gonna get a discount on a 30 meal plan, but you still have to order two 15 meal plans. It's a little more expensive, but that's how the system's designed to work. And I don't get to make the rules, I just get to say you gotta follow them. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Key fobs, anybody have their key fob with them today? Yay for you. So the key fobs, when you go into the dining room, they're scanned, and what they do, the reason they do that is it makes sure you get billed correctly. And so if there's two Thomases, or four Thomases, as the case may be, um, that will make sure that the right Thomas gets the right charge. Um, in one case, we do have two people by the exact same first and last name. So if you're not using a key fob, how are we gonna know which one you are? Um, key fobs are not required in assisted living. And if you lose yours, there is a replacement fee. I think it's $10 now. Um, if it stops working, then there's no charge. But let us know and we'll send you out a new one. Payment status, we are here to help you. Let us know promptly. I have an ear infection, so if I kind of sway, it's, that's what's going on. Um, anyway, so we're here to help you. Let us know promptly if there's any changes in your insurance status. Um, that means even if you're in independent living 
if you change your secondary insurance or if you swap off of traditional Medicare onto United Healthcare, Blue Cross, Aetna, whatever, you need to let us know because that affects any doctors that you may see in um, Cynthia's office. It also affects if you receive any outpatient therapy and we need to be able to bill your insurance right and verify your insurance the first time. Um, let's see. If you are running out of money, um, let us know. We can't give you financial advice, but we can offer assistance or provide a referral for the application process for Medicaid if you're in the health resource, if you're in the health center or RRU or um, benevolent assistance if you are a contract resident. Um, we do not accept Medicaid in assisted living and that's one of the purposes of benevolent assistance is when somebody has no more money. Um, we, let's see, keep us informed um, if you change your phone number, if you cancel your phone plan, um, if you have a family member who is an emergency contact, if they move or change their phone number, we need to know that. And those are the kinds of things we like to have in writing because we do, even though we enter that in the computer, we also put that in your file. Not everybody that may need to contact your emergency contact would have access to your um, HIPAA protected information that's in the computer. If you're going on vacation, make sure you drop a note with the receptionist and let her know when you're leaving and when you're coming back. And that is so that we know whether we should be checking on you if somebody says, gosh, I haven't seen Dr. Bailey in a few days. I hope he's okay. Oh, that's okay, he's on vacation. So that's a good thing, that's a good thing. If you go on vacation, please fit me in your suitcase because, you know, I'm due as well. Um, if you receive two bills, you will have gotten one for independent and assisted living and one that is probably for outpatient therapy services because the health center and RRU operate under a different type of license as for a skilled nursing facility the bills have to generate separately. Um, if you get two bills like that, then we do ask that you write two separate checks. It's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier when we go to apply those funds, and then you don't wind up with a credit in independent and a past due balance in, um, on the health center side. Does that make sense? And I think that is about all that I have. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Miss Elizabeth Ray. Oh, you said you didn't have it. I changed my mind. Oh. Well, Suzanne, you answered one question I had about the meal plans. We, we haven't done that yet. Um, if you were to buy a 30-day plan or 30-meal plan, do you have to use it in that one month? Or is it carry over until you're done using it? Meal plans are designed to be used in the month that they are purchased. Um, remember that all of the meals in those plans do come at a significant discount. So think about like lunch is $9.75. A 30-day meal plan, I believe they're $6.34. So you're saving quite a bit of money. So even if you don't use all 30, say you only use 25, you're still saving money in the long run. Anyone else? Yes, but it'll take half a second to get there. Time's up. <laughs> well, while Jim is coming, let me ask a question. Jim oh, here. my funny faces are going to show up on this video, right? Uh -huh. Can you edit those out, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Concerning a meal plan, if you're going to be out of the facility for a month or so, can you stop the meal plan for that month, or are, will you still be billed for the meal plan? Yes, you can stop the meal plan 
say you're going to be gone from May 1st to May 29th, then the recommendation would be to stop that meal plan, meal plan effective May 1st and restart it on June 1st. But remember, you got to let us know before May 1st, so by April 30th, that, you, that you're that you going to be gone out of town, whatever your, your plans are. We do know that hospitalizations, things like that, um, a trip to RRU will happen, and we will do our best to accommodate and re or, and or reimburse for those um, missed meals, if that's the case. That's something unplanned. We, there's no way you could possibly know about that. Thank you for your patience. Uh, there have been a lot of conversation about uh, the meal plans, and I'm going to tailgate on that thing just a little bit to do a commercial for the dining room. The dining committee is working with dining management to enhance the dining quality here. Uh, and so as I do this, I'm asking you to use Suzanne's service to sign up for a meal plan. We now have the two seatings at the old time set up for the dining room at 11.30, 12.30, and then the same times for the dinner at 5.30 and 6.30, I believe it is. Anyway, or is it 5 and 6? 5 and 6. Uh, we now have set up in the dining room, and dining management has done this, enough tables so that the first seating can sit down and enjoy their meal, and they do not have to worry about the chimes dinging them out of the room. So it becomes a very positive thing. And dining now is becoming a social activity in which we have lacked for the last, uh, what, 15 to 18 months, depending upon the time. So what they've done now is set enough tables for the first seating to sit, and they can sit and have a cup of coffee even after the second seating comes in so they can finish visiting and do it. And that's part of the joy of dining in the dining room. It becomes a social activity. And then this new, the second seating comes in, and they have tables all reserved for them so that there's no worry about having to get the table clean before the second service come in, comes in. The important thing is this whole change is a whole different atmosphere now in the dining room. We have background music. We have... Uh, uh, good service now that the, we, there is a reservation system so that we know exactly how many people are going to be here for each meal and servers can be assigned to your specific table. So what I'm urging you to do is take advantage of Susan's talents and call ahead and get yourself a meal plan and take advantage of buying a dinner for your, you and your bride at $6 and some odd cents a piece. You cannot eat at McDonald's for that price. So take advantage of it, and you'll find it's a very pleasant uh, outfit to, to be with when you're uh, get, enjoying part of, very important part of each day. So use, use your talents, uh, and uh, you will enjoy it, and you'll thank, you'll thank this old bald-headed guy for saying, please come to the dining room. Thank you, Susan, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Dowd. So there you go, there, there's your vote of confidence in our dining services. Um, the food here is pretty good. I've ate there all during COVID, and just so you all know, I'm up about 15 pounds. Um, so obviously it's pretty good, pretty darn good. So um, the dining room, again, meal plans are a great way to go. Um, I know if you're in a garden apartment, meal plan also comes with housekeeping services. It's a package deal. If there's a second person, we can all, you know, that's include, their meals are also included in your package deal. So, anything else? Going, going, <laughs> gone. So, one last thing, I, w I do have welcome letters to hand out to all of you, kind of give you an idea of everything we've gone over, because I know it's a lot of information. And I also have um, the auto pay forms, if anybody is interested in at least considering auto pay. Um, I know there's a lot of people that do use it. We've got over 200 that currently use auto pay. 
It makes our lives a lot easier. And then all you have to do is just make sure there's money in your account every month. You don't have to worry about writing a check or, um, oh, gosh, am I going to be late? Is Susan going to call me on the 21st and say, we haven't received your payment yet? And if there's a special circumstance, such as um, your Social Security doesn't go into the bank until the fourth Wednesday of the month, because I know that happens for some folks, um, we can actually set it up so that your payment, your automatic deduction doesn't come out until the 28th of the month. So we can do the 20th or the 28th. Don't everybody go rushing and saying, oh, change mine to the 28th. Um, that's usually for new signers, you know, because we, we just know that that's how it works sometimes. So we want to be, we're here to help you. Um, I'm at extension 305. That is 904-287-7305. Um, I am in the office generally Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. There's a lot of days I'm here earlier, a lot of days I'm here a little later. Um, and I didn't talk about my dog. Uh-oh. Okay, guys. I have a 90-pound beast. The last time I was here, I was fostering um, a dog with PTSD. And um, we were his last stop, and that was about a year ago. And his PTSD got the best of him. So we had to let him go. And exactly 30 days later, um, this other beast who was on death row at Union County Animal Shelter was um, introduced to us. And we just tell folks that we busted him out of prison <laughs> because the Union County Animal Shelter is at the prison. So um, he is a 90 pound beast. Um, he is a he looks like a gray pit. He's about three years old, loves people, loves dogs, wants to eat every squirrel he comes in contact with, um, but has not eaten my cat. So we're good there. Um, sometime in the future, I will see if I can get him on good enough behavior to bring him by. And if you see us, his name is Apollo. Um, he's actually 50% lab. I had a DNA test done because, you know, insurance. <laughs> um, and that's it. Thanks, guys, for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Again, I'm Susan, and I'm from the business office. You know what? If you take these things out of your ear wrong, then all that other stuff that's up there in your ear comes out, too. So making that correction. Uh, Susan, you really, you did a great job. You, you were about five minutes over. So next time you speak, you're going to be at the tail end. If you have any questions of Susan, she's here now. But I think she's here most of the day because she's one of these people that works for the administration that is, she's the manager on duty. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, anybody yet figured out where these pieces go? <laughs> it's gone from 150 to 152 dollars. <laughs> That's a big jump. Hey. I'm sure my dog will eat them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me the 152. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. Oh, listen. We do have another person speaking today, and uh, <clears throat> I asked her to give me a resume of who she was. And for some reason, she forgot or decided not to do that. And that leaves me wide open. <laughs> Pam Thomas is our speaker. Pam Thomas, along with a couple of her cohorts, are running the boutique. And she's going to tell us all about that. Um, what I can tell you about Pam is that I, didn't, I don't know a lot about her life and growing up and where she, she's from North Carolina, I think, which is okay. Uh, but I do know that she married into a very famous family. She married into the Thomas family and her mother-in-law, Doris Thomas, is one of our residents over uh, right now in rapid recovery, but she lives in Magnolia. And uh, Pam has a husband named Drew. And the one thing I have in common with Drew, he's six seven. I'm not. I wear a size 16 shoe. 
and he does too. So about once every six weeks, Drew and I get together and we swap shoes out of our closet so that, you know, you'll never know who's walking around this campus. <laughs> uh, Pam and, and Drew have been with us about a year now, I think, and uh, moved down here from North Carolina. And uh, so, uh, Pam, come and tell us uh, what you'd like us to know about uh, the boutique. And you can take that mask off because we can hear you better. You know, without masks, we're going to have to get to know each other again. I only recognize most of you with your mask. If I see you without, it's like, hmm. Yeah, I kind of wait for you to tell me who you are. So anyway, I'm trying to fake it. Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, we're very proud of our boutique, and uh, we um, want to invite you to come visit with us. The boutique, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> The money that we earn in the boutique goes towards the Benevolent Fund. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. The money that we earn in the boutique goes towards the, um, the um, Benevolent Fund. The, and also the expenses go to the um, Residence Council for their expenses as well. We suffered a lot in the boutique this year. We opened in October which was, of course, everyone was, um, we were in the middle of the um, pandemic. People weren't coming out of their homes and uh, nobody was shopping. But we decided that we would go ahead and open as a way of giving people a place to go on campus, mm -hmm. just to get out and walk around a little bit and have a place to go. So we wanted it to be a fun place for you, a place to come and browse. And I found out that there are people who never shop a thrift store. Never. Because when they go in a store, they want to know where they're going. They want to go and know that what they want is going to be there. So we try very, very hard to meet your needs. And um, when you give your donations to us, um, it helps others be able to find what they need. And that has been a wonderful thing for people during the pandemic when, for those who don't drive, it was a wonderful place if they needed to replace something. Of course, there was the boutique for to um, be able to help them with that. We take mainly clothing and household goods. We would like to take furniture. A lot of people have furniture they want us to take in there, but our floor space is so limited that we're not able to take furniture routinely. Every now and then, a small table, a small chair, we can take those. We like to say that we have an uptown boutique at thrift store prices. So we started out with um, different prices for everything and then people got confused about that because we don't man it and people weren't really sure about what the prices were. So we made a sign and we, we tried to simplify it by saying that all clothes, all shoes, all purses and belts are $3. So, and then other things we price individually. Um, you can find things that range from 10 cents to a dollar to $2 uh, if it's really nice. So you're getting a great bargain when you go. And man, I want to take a special opportunity to welcome you into the boutique. We receive a lot of men's clothes, a lot of slacks, a lot of shirts. And I know that men don't hysterically, historically shop, but I do want to invite you to come in. We will have something for you. We have put all the men's clothing at the back so that you don't have to walk around the store and try to find things. We keep them sized. I want to give a heads up to Bill Walker, who was just in there the other day. He rehung the men's pants and brought special hangers in which he could write the, uh, the whole size. The, we just got in a bunch of Thank you so much. You can tell she was a nurse. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pardon me. Thank you. Um, we just got a bunch of like 36 30s, um, like 12 pair. So if you wear that, please come see us. We'll make a great deal for you. Um, another thing that we do is um, the pop-up sales. Have you ever been to a pop-up sale? Let me see your hand. 
Okay. Not a lot of people go to the pop-up <laughs> sales. Um, and I know that people will tell us that, um, you know, they don't need anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate that. But there might be something there that you need to replace in your home. You never know. We have um, a variety of things that people uh, will donate um, to us through the, the um, pop-up sales. For those of you who do not know what a pop-up sale is, is we have pop-up sales when people are moving from independent living to assisted living. Their families have cleaned out what they want from the apartment, and then anything else that's left there can come to, um, to us, and we host a sale. The prices are low. Um, the people who support that primarily are our staff. I've had so many come in and tell me that they've been able to um, furnish their apartment because of pop-up sales. Um, so it's really benefiting our staff. And I'm sure it would benefit you too if you need something like um, something new for your home, um, maybe um, a small piece of furniture or something to replace what you have that's broken. We have a variety of things and very nice things that go for um, prices that um, those uh, who are limited in funds can find something new to replace. I had a lady tell me not long ago that She's had a table in her apartment with a broken leg for over a year. And she says she has it propped up on another piece of furniture so it doesn't rock when she eats. <laughs> Very clever, right? So uh, she doesn't drive, and she hasn't been out during the, the pandemic, of course. So at one of the pop-up sales, she was able to buy a table to replace the one in her home that was broken. So that was a wonderful um, opportunity to, for her. I encourage you to come in and look. The money that um, goes to the, um, the council is used for their expenses, for um, incidentals and things like that that they have coming, for paper costs, for stamps. Yes, Elizabeth. Yes, the boutique sales, um, the money that we earn from there goes for staff awards. Um, anything that we do special for staff uh, goes there. Was that, does that adequately cover what you were saying? The supplies for the, the fund. Um, so it's a very important that we continue with um, earning our proceeds. Of course, last year, October, we opened People weren't really coming out. And, and actually, during October, November, and December, people were still, you know, not wanting to come out. They didn't want to socialize, or they didn't need anything. It was a very depressing time. People couldn't buy gifts to take to their grandchildren. They couldn't buy, they weren't buying gifts from anybody. And so people were just emotionally, I think, depressed. And they really didn't come in the shop to buy anything. They just came in the shop as a place to go and just walk, walk around. So it was a very depressed time in there. We didn't sell much of anything. But um, since this year, uh, 2021, our sales have picked up. And I would like to say that even with the decreased sales, we were able to donate $4,635 to the Retirement Community Benevolent Assistance Fund for this, this past year. Thank you. I understand that was a third of what we normally uh, provide, but uh, considering our circumstances, we're very proud of that as well. I want to talk to you about pricing. Does anybody have any questions about the way we price things? Okay. Um, just to explain for those that, that may be watching at home, if you have questions, the purpose of the pop-up sales is not just to give people an opportunity to buy things um, at greatly reduced prices. It's also motivated by the fact that the families have been in, they've taken all they have or all they want, 
and the apartment, the residence needs to be cleaned out so that um, the Westminster can get in, clean it out, and then flip the, the residence. So um, we do not price antiques at their value. There's no way that we would sell them. Uh, so we do price things to move the furniture out and clear the apartment. So it's a great place to be able to come and, and find things. Uh, like I said, our staff have been able to come and furnish their apartments, which um, has been able to greatly support them. Any more, did, any questions based on that? Well, I want to thank you for your support. It really means a lot to us because we work hard. We work very hard. And um, we will accept your donations anytime. I know I put in the chimes Tuesdays and Thursdays, but people are always needing to get rid of something before then. So bring it to the front, leave it at the front door. I have some bins there where you can leave them. Just let me caution you or make a request, please. When you bring things to the boutique, please make sure that they're not broken and that the clothing are clean. Uh, we get a lot of stuff that we have to pass on because of, of that. So please um, bring it and bring it ready to sell. That would be wonderful. Okay, the things that we can't sell in the boutique um, or don't sell in the boutique, things that would not sell in the boutique, can we donate to Betty Griffin or to Goodwill? Um, we usually take um, um, a box or two over. Uh, we also give clothing to Mike and Sharon Williams who take it to the homeless shelters downtown. And uh, they get a lot of our heavier clothes for the winter time. Um, and then um, they get a lot of the other clothes as well so that they're able to layer clothing as they need. All right? Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I will see you at the boutique. Thank you, Pam. Uh, before you leave, don't forget to wander this way and pick up these letters that Susan has for you that might have some information that she forgot to tell us. Um, <clears throat> we're glad you're here, and uh, we'll look forward. We do this next month, and uh, I know who the speakers are next month, but you don't. <laughs> na -na 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 -na. <laughs> no, we'll, uh, we'll be back here the second Saturday of June, and we'll look forward to seeing you. And, and uh, those of you who are regular, I don't need to say this to you, but for, for uh, you know, people that are new, Jack, uh, tell people they can keep coming. They don't have to come just once and be introduced. Uh, the more we have a chance to get together like this and socialize together, um, and be uh, friends and neighbors of the same community is helpful to us all. So again, thank you for coming, and we will look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. <laughs>